Now, a few weeks ago, over on the community tab, I asked you guys what you want to see on the channel, and so many of you said wafer paper. Now, there is a technique that I have been seeing on Pinterest that I just couldn't wait to try. So, in this week's video tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can create these really fun wafer paper decorations. So, we've got these 3D balls, and we've got these wedges that, when put together, just give the prettiest design, whether it's on a birthday cake or especially if you want a design to add onto a wedding cake. Now I really hope you enjoyed this video, if you do don't forget to give it a like and if you'd like to see more videos like this and you haven't already then don't forget to subscribe to the Cakes by Ninja YouTube channel. Okay, let's get started. So the things that we're gonna need in order to make these edible balls or discs to add onto the side of our cake is first of all, I've got some edible wafer paper, which is also known as rice paper. This one just comes in a pack of 12 and it's around A5 in size, but you can also get larger sheets. So if I take one of the pieces out, we've just got this sheet of white paper. Now, even though it's called rice paper, this brand in particular, when you look at the ingredients, they actually use potato starch. Now, another thing I just wanted to mention is you don't want to get this rice paper confused with the rice paper that you use to make edible sales, which I recently made on the channel. For these, we used Vietnamese rice paper and it was these translucent discs. These aren't actually going to be any good to make these circles, so just make sure that this is what you're using. I've also got some craft cutters and these just cut circles. So this one will cut a circle which is two inches across and this one will cut a circle which is an inch across. Now if you don't have these it's absolutely fine. You can just draw a circle out on a sheet of card, cut it out and use it as a template. Now depending on how you want your cake to look you can leave your circles white or you can colour them using some edible tints or some luster dust. So I've got some dusky pink edible tin by Sugar Flare, which will give you a matte finish. Or I've also got some of the Sweet Sticks metallic luster dust in the pink diamond, which will just make those discs shimmer. I've got a fluffy brush to apply this. I've got a slightly smaller brush and just a little pot of water. And lastly, I've got some edible glue just for sticking them on the side of my cake. So I've just placed down my blue mat just so you can see that wafer paper a bit better on my surface. So the first thing you want to do is I've taken a few sheets of my wafer paper and I'm gonna use one of my cutters to cut out some discs. I'm trying to keep these as close together as I can so that I waste the least amount of wafer paper. Now, in order to get into this section, I'm just gonna cut off the excess and I can get my little punch in there. I'm then going to take my smaller punch and just down the side cut out some smaller circles. Now you can cut these circles in any size that you like. You could also create some different shapes depending on the type of design you want to create. Now the most important thing to know about wafer paper is if it gets wet or damp it will start to go sticky and actually dissolve. But you can leave these white or you could add some colour. So I'm just going to bring it in my plate and just add on some of that dusky pink edible tint and a little bit of the pink luster dust. Now using a large fluffy brush you want to take one of your discs and you can just run that colour over the top and that's going to give you a really pretty pink. Now the more colour you add onto your disc the darker the colour is going to be. So you just want to work out how you want your discs or your balls to look on your cake. Now I'm colouring my discs separately. You could also use your fluffy brush and just colour the whole of your sheet before you cut out your circles. I just find by doing each disc separately it does take a little bit more time but you don't waste any of that edible tint. And you also want to make sure that you're doing the back and the front. You then want to take each of your discs and fold these directly in half, just squishing along the back. Now when you fold wafer paper it does start to break along the back but don't worry too much. So I've got 
my rice paper semicircles and I've also brought in my water. Now, when you're using the water, you wanna dip your brush in and try and get off as much as you can, just so the end of your brush is a little bit damp. There are two ways to add these together. We could add the semicircles together at that fold. And that's gonna mean that the front of our circles are all in line. Another way you could do them is actually by slotting them inside each other. What this is gonna do is just mean that the ones that you've added in last into the center are just slightly longer than the rest. So this is gonna give you quite a weird shape ball if you're adding them all together. Now to work out how many you're gonna need, it really depends on the type of shape that you're creating. If you wanna create just a quarter of a circle, like this for example, this one's got five of these semicircles together. So between four or five will give you a nice looking quarter of a circle. But the more you add in, the more detail you're gonna have. Now if you were creating a ball, because you can spread them out quite a lot, I like to create this with two two halves of six each. So it has a total of 12. Now, I don't know about you, but when they're turned into balls, it really does remind me of Christmas tree decorations from when I was younger. Okay, so in order to glue our discs together, I'm gonna take my first one and I'm gonna run a small amount of water just along that fold. Now, as we add the water, that rice paper or wafer paper is gonna start to dissolve. This is going to make the wafer paper quite tacky. So if I place my next semicircle up against it so the folds meet, I can just pinch that together. And as you can see, they have attached. So I'm going to take another one. And again, just run some water along that fold. Now you want to make sure that you're only running the brush just along the top, as if you get any water or moisture on the side and you stick these together, it will stick together on the side. And if you run your finger along, you can feel how tacky it's become. So I'm gonna add a couple more. We then wanna leave our discs to dry. As that water starts to dry, it stops becoming sticky and it actually becomes quite firm. Now, to leave them to dry, if you wanted to create a quarter circle or something that looked a little bit like a wedge, you just wanna leave it on its side to dry. Now, if you were creating a ball, because it does become quite firm, you wanna open it out so that your first and your last piece is laying flat. I'm just gonna open those out slightly, but you will be able to move them around once it has dried. Now, they don't actually take too long to dry, so I'm gonna leave them for around 15 minutes while I make some more. Now, in terms of the smaller ones, you just wanna do exactly the same. So just fold them in half and just glue those folded edges together using some of your water. So there we have one with the larger circles and also one of the smaller ones using the smaller discs. Once all of that rice paper has dried, they've become a lot more solid. Now you're able to just move those semicircles around, just opening them up and moving them into place. Now with the two semicircles, I wanna add these together to create a ball. And to do this, I'm gonna use some edible glue. Add in some of that edible glue just down the center and I'm gonna bring those two together and then pull these around just to give me more of an even spread. And that's gonna give me a really pretty 3D ball. You then wanna make a selection of all of these and I've got some in a slightly darker pink, some in a slightly lighter pink and also some in white. And I'm gonna use these to attach onto my cake. Okay, so for the cake, I've got a five inch cake. So this one measures five inches across and five inches in height. I've then placed it on an eight inch drum board and I've covered both in a layer of white fondant. Now to glue them down, I'm just gonna be using some edible glue. You could use water, I just find this sticks a little bit better. Now you only wanna add a really thin layer of that edible glue onto the back of your wafer paper as the wafer paper will absorb some of that moisture so it will start to soften. I'm gonna save my four balls for the top. So I'm gonna be adding some of the semicircles and also the quarter circles 
up the side. Now I'm adding these onto a fondant covered cake. I have actually tested this out on a buttercream cake as I know a lot of you prefer to use buttercream and it did actually seem to work well. You want to make sure that your buttercream isn't too wet as that wafer paper could absorb some of the moisture from your buttercream. One thing you do want to do is make sure that you don't put them in the fridge. It could make the wafer paper a little bit sticky. Now the great thing about these decorations is this there's no right or wrong way to add them onto your cake. I can then glue some of those larger balls onto the top. So I'm just placing some of that edible glue just along one of those pieces. So here we have the finished cake with these really pretty wafer paper decorations. We've got the 3D balls on the top and down the side we've got these different size wedges. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and will be able to use this technique to add some decorations onto your own cakes. If you have enjoyed the video, as always, don't forget to give it a like. And if you'd like to see more videos like this and you haven't already, then don't forget to subscribe to the Cakes Finding YouTube channel. You can also hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button and this will alert you every time I upload a new video. So, until next time, bye!